Well, it's a great joy to welcome you here to St. John's tonight as we celebrate the great news of Christmas. Uh, this is what we're going to hear from uh, the book of Isaiah, which says this. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You please stand as we begin uh, in singing.
please be seated. Well, again, it's a great joy to welcome you here. If I haven't met you yet, my name's Michael, and I'm one of the ministers here at St. John's. It's great to be able to have you here as we uh, celebrate Christmas together. Uh, as we come to God and as we come uh, in this service, uh, we can do so confidently uh, in the knowledge of God's love and forgiveness for us and in God's care and compassion for us. And so that means that we are freely able to be able to come and worship him. And we begin with this prayer of preparation as you join me on the screen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly expectation of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, it's now time for our Bible reading, so Janelle is going to come up and read. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. I better put my glasses on. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle, tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfil what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Well, the shopping is finally done. The presents are hopefully all wrapped. Uh, confession, I've got one more present to wrap uh, before the night is out. Um, all the food is planned, all the family are in town, the decorations are up and looking gorgeous. It's finally here, it's Christmas time. Uh, in just a few hours, it'll be Christmas morning with the fun that it brings with opening up presents for some and for some, the not so fun thing of kids waking up dead early in the morning uh, right in your face in the bed. Uh, there's something so wondrous about this time of Christmas. Uh, there's something different about it. Some people call it the magic of Christmas. Uh, others people call it the hassle of Christmas. Uh, but why is it in 21st century Australia that we get a, a few public holidays, uh, we spend copious amounts of energy, time and money to celebrate this thing that we call Christmas. Uh, what is it all about? Well, tonight, I want to tell you about it. Uh, what makes this time of year so special isn't just the family time, even though that's very precious, and it's not just the presents and the food, even though the food is delicious, but at the heart of it, it's about a person. Christmas is about a person. It's about the wonder of the good news of the birth of Jesus. Now, there are a number of things, of amazing things that I could tell you tonight about Jesus, but tonight I want to tell you three things. Uh, that is that Jesus is God turned up, that Jesus is born to save us, and that Jesus is born to be with us. Now, the reading that we heard read earlier was from a book called Matthew. Uh, Matthew is an account of Jesus' life. And Matthew gives us the origin story of Jesus. And the way that Jesus came onto this earth was less than ordinary. It was extraordinary. Uh, Mary and Joseph were a regular, ordinary couple living in Israel about 2,000 years ago. Uh, they were engaged to be married... But suddenly, Mary became pregnant. Now, if you put yourselves in Joseph's shoes at this point, uh, it's a little bit awkward, isn't it? Uh, his fiancée had become pregnant. His reputation was on the line. Her reputation was on the line as well. So Matthew tells us is that Joseph is a good bloke, so he made up his mind just to divorce her quietly and go quietly, call off the marriage, save any scandal, save any negative press. Uh, but suddenly an angel intervenes. It says in Matthew 1 verse 20, but as he, that's Joseph, as Joseph considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. The baby that Mary has is from God. This is God turned up. This is God turned up as a human. God being born as a normal, everyday human baby. But he is a completely wondrous human baby. 100% God. 100% human. It was God turned up and born in order to save us. Uh, the angel continues to speak to Joseph and says, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, what is in a name? Uh, for some of us here, uh, we may have had a first-hand experience coming up with names for our kids. Uh, there's a lot of pressure to come up with names because this is the name that they will have for the whole of their lives, so don't get it wrong. 
Uh, some parents may go down the route of the family name. Uh, others may go down the route of naming their kids after close friends. Um, others after their favorite TV show characters. Um, some may have thought long and hard about the name of their kid, only for them never to be called that name because, of course, they're Australian and we give them a nickname that's totally unrelated to that name. But Mary and Joseph managed to avoid all this stress because God gave them the name for this baby. This baby was going to be called Jesus. Why? Well, because of what it means. Jesus means a saviour. Jesus means someone who will rescue people. And the angel tells us that Jesus is going to save his people from their sins. He is going to rescue them from their problem of sin. Uh, when we talk about sin here, it simply means any action or, or a way of life that is lived in rebellion to God, against God's way of life. And what sin does is that it causes a fracture between us and God. It causes fractures in our relationships with one another. It causes there to be hostility and brokenness in the world. This is a big problem. Sin is a big problem, but God has a great solution. And this solution is Jesus. Jesus is going to save us from our sin. God is going to rescue us from our rebellion against him. That's the wonder of his name. That's the wonder of the birth of Jesus, that Jesus is going to grow up and he's going to take the punishment that we deserved by his death on the cross and securing our relationship with God made possible in his resurrection, which means that we can be friends with God, we can have a relationship with God both now and forevermore. Which means that we don't have to go through life alone. We don't have to go through the struggles of this world by ourselves. We don't have to live our lives without purpose or without direction. But we can have all of these things because of Jesus, who brings us back in our relationship with God. This is Jesus, who is God turned up, born to save us, born to be with us. Uh, Matthew continues in verse 22. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son and called his name Jesus. See, Jesus has another name, Emmanuel, which means God with us, which means God turned up on earth to bring us back to him. Uh, this shows us that God isn't distant or disinterested from us. No, this shows us that God cares for us and loves us enough to even come to us. He loves us enough to experience all that we can possibly experience and more. The struggles, the hurt, the terror of this life. He knows what it's like to be able to comfort us. Jesus is able to care and sympathize with everything that we go through. And he loves us. He cares for us. And he wants us to turn back to him and experience the wonder of his love for ourselves. To experience the depths of his grace, the riches of his mercy. So this Christmas, don't miss out on seeing the real wonder of Christmas. It's not the magic of Christmas. It's not the decorations. It's not all the periphery stuff. The amazing wonder of Christmas is Jesus. Uh, the other night, uh, my wife and I went for a little stroll around uh, our suburb, Rochdale, 
uh, to have a look at the Christmas lights around. Um, there were some houses which put in a really good effort. Uh, there were some which are, you know, a little bit lackluster, but good points for trying. Um, but there, there was this one house which was absolutely mega. Uh, it had lights everywhere. It had Disney characters on posters. I don't know what they have to do with Christmas, but they were there. Uh, there were these giant baubles. It was amazing. You could look into the house and see all the decorations within the house as well. It was amazing. But all that Rach and I could do was stand at a distance and observe the wonder. We couldn't take the decorations home. That would be theft. Uh, We couldn't stay there permanently. We couldn't go in. We couldn't claim the decorations as our own. We could only stand at a distance in awe and, and wonder. But unlike that grand house, God doesn't want us to just observe the Christmas story at a distance. But he wants us to know it personally. He wants that Christmas story to become our story. He wants us to experience it and really know God's love, know God's compassion, know God's forgiveness, know Jesus personally and intimately. So tonight... Come and see and know the wonder of Jesus. The Son is born. The Saviour has come. Sin is gone. Life has come. Come and see the wonder. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, how we thank you so much for the amazing wonder of Christmas. We thank you so much for the depths of your love for us, that you would come for us in the form of a human baby, that you would put on mortality, that you would become fragile enough to love us, that you would even die for us to rescue us from our sins. And so, Heavenly Father, amidst all the busyness and the fun, the food, the family, help us to see the real wonder of Christmas your son, Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, One of the things which we do here is we stand and declare what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed, the Apostles' Creed, which has been recited by Christians over the past two millenniums. So would you please stand? And if you feel like you can make this creed your own, would you please join with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue in prayer. Let us pray. Father, in all the rush and bustle and commercialism of Christmas, we are glad that we can set aside this time to remember the real reason for this season of celebration. This night, may we give glory to Jesus, the newborn King of Bethlehem, the Son of God, the King of all the world. We pray that this Christmas, You will help us to focus our thoughts on the wonder and joy of your saving love and grace, the love and grace that sent Jesus from the glories of heaven to humbly live as a man among us and die for us. May we celebrate with thankfulness a truly Christ-centred Christmas. May we, like Mary, increase the love and joy and worship of our hearts until they are more in tune with just how great you are. 
may we truly be able to say, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. Father, we are so thankful that many of us can enjoy Christmas with our families. May the peace of Christ be close to us at this time as we joyfully celebrate your goodness and love. And not only at Christmas, but every day throughout the year, may we seek to love and serve you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. But Father, we're also mindful of those who for various reasons will not find this Christmas a happy occasion. The poor, the lonely, the homeless, those affected by fires and flooding, the millions of refugees throughout the world, those for whom this time sharpens the pain of loss and suffering, those with conflict within their families, those separated from family members by distance and those who are suffering serious illnesses. Help us to reach out with words of comfort and practical help wherever we can and may each troubled person seek and know the peace of your presence with them. May, may they be reminded of the fact that although you are the King of glory, and your birth was proclaimed with great joy by a host of angels, you were humbly laid to sleep in an animal's feeding trough because there was no room for you anywhere else. May they be reminded that throughout your adult life, you knew what it was like to be despised and rejected and full of sorrow and to have no home to call your own. And Lord, at this time we hear a lot about peace on earth and we thank you for all the places where there is peace and freedom to proclaim your saving gospel. But we are also very conscious of the places where war and strife abound and where people are suffering day after day. We especially pray for the people of Ukraine and the Middle East and other troubled areas of the world. Please have mercy on these nations, Lord. Hold back those who cause terror and death and destruction and help those who are at the centre of each conflict to have a true spirit of reconciliation. And help us to remember that we can only find true peace when we come to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. At this time, we also think of the work of Operation Christmas Child, seeking to give gifts to needy children around the world. We pray that all the shoe boxes that have been so lovingly packed with goodies will arrive safely and that the children who receive them will learn of your love for them. Thank you that every child who receives a shoe box is also given the opportunity to attend a 12-lesson discipleship program. Jesus, you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the promised Messiah, and you shall reign forever and ever. So may we also look forward to that great day when you will return in glory to bring in your kingdom in all its fullness. So we pray these things in the name of King Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Uh, we heard before that uh, one of the great joys that Christmas brings is that Jesus will save his people from their sins, which means that we can come to God and we can say sorry for the times when we haven't lived as he would want us to live. Uh, this is what we call confession. And we can come to God in confession, not, not being scared of him, uh, not fearful of punishment, 
uh, but confident in his love and mercy. So would you please pray with me the prayer on the screen as we confess together. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them for the sake of your Son who died for us. Forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The amazing news is that God is slow to anger and full of compassion, forgiving all who repent and trust in his Son as Saviour and Lord. God therefore forgives you in Christ Jesus, in whom there is no condemnation. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Well, would you please stand as we sing our next carol, Once in Royal David City. Please be seated. Uh, we now have the opportunity to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Uh, this is a meal which helps us remember the death and resurrection of Jesus. 
So if you call yourself a follower of Jesus and Jesus is your Lord, you are more than welcome to come to the table tonight and and celebrate with us. Uh, The way that it works is that uh, I'll be up the front with uh, a piece of bread and and Chris will be alongside me with a little uh, cup of grape juice and you'll be able to take that and take it back to your seats and we'll eat and drink together uh, at the end once we've all uh, managed to get our piece of bread and grape juice. Uh, Just to let you know, the bread is gluten-free as well, um, so you can keep that in mind. But here's the great news from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. So therefore, lift up your hearts, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, making us in your own image. We praise you for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and rising to new life, offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, we lift our voices to praise you, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, gracious God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. And we pray that we who receive them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share his body and blood. For the night before he died, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. We eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim the death of the Lord. We do this until he returns. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, as we recall his saving death and glorious resurrection, may we who share these gifts be renewed by your Holy Spirit and united in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, there to feast at your table and join in your eternal praise. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. Amen.
Friends, the body of Christ, which was perfect and yet broken on our behalf by his death on the cross. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. And drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you. And be thankful. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you for assuring us of your goodness and love and that we are living members of Christ's body together. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming tonight to St. John's and celebrating uh, the wonder of Christmas. I hope that you have a great day tomorrow uh, celebrating with family and, and friends with uh, plenty of food and an afternoon nap as well in there somewhere. Uh, if you are visiting St. John's and, and you want to ask more questions about Jesus or about uh, what we do here at St. John's, uh, you would have received uh, one of these flyers as you came in. On the back of that is a form which you can just fill out and you can put in the box up the back and somebody from the church will be in contact uh, throughout the week, or you can even get out your phone and scan the QR code and fill out the form online, and somebody will be able to uh, contact you. Uh, you're more than welcome to join us at any of our services uh, on a Sunday. So on a Sunday, we have our regular 9 a.m. service. Uh, tomorrow at Christmas Day, if you want to come back and, and have less sleep and come at 9 a.m., uh, we are also going to be having our Christmas service then. But again, uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. Would you please stand as we sing our final carol? <laughs>
Uh, Lord God, we thank you that Jesus Christ was born so that no more may die. And Lord, we pray that this Christmas, that we may know afresh of his love for us and comfort for us, and that we may come and know of the wonder of your birth for us. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, through his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hope you have a great Christmas. Thank you.